All right, guys, Albanian SKS, let's go. A couple of rounds and we'll do a little bit of talking here. Definitely a weird variant of the SKS. You ready, Chad? Yeah, you shooting 100 first? I'm gonna just go on out to three. Bye. Um, elevation looked good. Looked like you were just a little bit left. There you go. That was uh, off at 10 o'clock. There you go. Favor on the right side, good elevation. Right off the right side at one o'clock. There you go. Off at right side. It always throws that last round out of the magazine. All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Direct Veteran 8888. And uh, I wanted to show off just a really um, kind of oddball and interesting variant of the SKS. Uh, you guys know that we love our mill syrups around here, and we thought it'd be fun to talk about the Albanian. This is probably one of the rarest SKSs out there. And it also has a pretty unique distinction of being one of the last uh, military-produced SKSs uh, around in terms of time frames. Uh, these were produced between 1967 and 1978. This is a final year production uh, Albanian SKS. This one was made in 1978 relatively high serial number too so um, this is definitely a later gun um, a couple of features set the albanian sks apart from other uh, skss albania was basically uh, given a license to produce the chinese type 56 so it's essentially a copy of a chinese type 56 but with a couple of different features for one um, the handguard is definitely longer you can see this upper gas uh, tube and handguard is much longer than a standard SKS. Also, the bayonet is blued, okay, which is, this is one of the only SKSs I know of that uses a blued bayonet. So they blued the bayonet and the bayonet is slightly longer and has kind of a unique shape to it. All right, so, um, so far, mm, some differences, right? Also the charging handle. Uh, we notice that instead of being a cylindrical shaped charging handle, it uses kind of a cut style charging handle uh, similar to an AK-47. Uh, so that's one difference in the carrier and the parts are not interchangeable. Uh, hardly none of these parts are interchangeable other than some of the small parts such as like, I believe the front sight base is relatively the same to the Type 56, the rear sight, uh, the rear dust cover, a few small parts, but most of the major parts are however entirely different. Um, the other difference between the Albanian and some of the other SKSs is also the curvature of the magazine is a very distinct difference in the magazine. Uh, you can see that shape, that kind of curvature that's down there at the bottom. Uh, that is a completely unique aspect to the Albanian SKS. Um, another big difference is also the butt, pat, the butt plate has two traps in it instead of a single trap. So they added two traps, I suppose one for like a cleaning rod. Well, no, it's got a cleaning rod. I don't know why they did two traps on that, but there is a cleaning kit in one of them. Actually, I think, this one has a cleaning kit in it. Maybe their ammo was so dirty it required two kits. <laughs> Look at that. So there's our, there's our cleaning kit. You got a brush, a jag, a pool. That is so cool. In there, so we, I, that's actually something I didn't even know was uh, in this particular gun was the original cleaning kit is also uh, intact, okay? And that just goes back in there and you try to get it in there without getting your fingers stuck. Another unique uh, feature of the Albanian SKS also is this kind of odd orange shellac uh, that they spray on the stock. So that, that's one thing that you'll always see on the Albanian SKS is the shellac is not only this kind of bright orange color, think like Donald Trump's hair. You're kind of right there in that area, okay? But it also checks in a really odd way. When you look at these stocks, there's this really cool checking uh, in the finish that as far as I know, this is the only SKS that, that the finish really checks like that. And every single Albanian that I've ever seen, Albanian SKS, they always have that really cool checking on the stock. And uh, what causes that checking in a lot of cases is going between a hot and a cold environment rapidly. So like if you're going in and out of a building where it might be cool inside the building, or if you're going in, in and out of, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're in a, in a hot environment, you're going in and out of a cave or something, 
anytime you've got a rapid change of temperature or a, a lot of exposure to humid climates, maybe that checking is caused from rapid changes in temperature and humidity. Um, that's just a guess. You can see some spots on the stock where, uh, the, where the finish has sort of worn down and the wood looks to me to be pretty much your standard fare that they would have used on the uh, Chinese uh, SKS. So other than that, it's essentially a copy of the Ch Chinese Type 56. And it's also a rare and obscure variant of the SKS that you don't really see that often. Uh, so we thought that we would just, um, you know, do a video on it. The safety is exactly the same. The trigger mechanism, from what I can tell, pretty much about the same as the standard uh, SKS. I don't know if they're interchangeable. Uh, but given, given that so many of these parts are so funky and, and odd compared to uh, other ones, we can only assume that I would not consider the parts to be 100% uh, interchangeable at all, especially when you start getting into uh, carriers and, and the long gas tube and things. Um, so it, it is a licensed copy of the SKS. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was produced on the same machinery that the Chinese and Russian counterparts were produced on. So remember when uh, the early Chinese SKSs were coming out, uh, the Soviets actually sent advisors and machinery to the Chinese to produce the SKS in China. So obviously a gun that is produced on Russian machinery with Russian advisors, obviously it's going to be a pretty dang good uh, you know, copy of the SKS, whereby the Albanians, maybe they, they probably did not have that luxury, okay? They didn't have the original machinery. They didn't have Chinese or Russian advisors, to my knowledge. Uh, this was kind of their shot at it. So that's what makes it sort of unique. And I'm going to please Chad and dial back down to 100, and we'll shoot some 100-yard groups. <laughs> you can keep shooting three. Uh, as far as I know, I, I don't... I'll have to check the barrel later. I don't know if these are chrome lined or not. Uh, hmm. That's a detail I, I failed to check earlier, but. I don't know, I would expect it, I mean, to be chrome lined if it's a military rifle, you know? But you gotta think, this is a very late version of SKS. I mean, it was made in 1978. I can't think of many SKSs that were late, made that late. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy. You gotta think, on all the guns that were out at the time, they could have made any gun they wanted, and they made this in 1978? No. That's nuts. It's pretty random. I had no idea it was that late of a, yeah. late of a gun. Absolutely. All right, Crazy. I'm just going to aim right at it at 100, yeah, see what ahead. happens. Uh, yeah, shoot a little group real quick. Or a big group. Keep going. I don't really have much to aim at. It's just sort of a big blob down there. Trying to find a consistent spot to aim at. More of a shotgun pattern. <laughs> well, besides that one first shot, I mean, it's stacking into about a fist size group. It's kind of. I don't think you could ask for right better than center. that, man. You. That's not bad. Yeah, and at all. look at that, and it and it threw that last round out. It's the weirdest thing. That is so strange. Yeah, I, I don't know if maybe just the the magazine springs getting a little wore out or what. Uh, this is not a gun that I really shoot very often. It's kind of more of a collectible. Uh, if you guys watch any of our gun gripes or any of the stuff we do in the studio, uh, you probably recognize this gun hanging up in the background. Uh, this is kind of one of our little you know background guns. Mm -hmm. What's that weird SKS? Well, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this video, because a lot of folks ask, like, hey, what's that weird SKS on the wall? And a lot of folks have, have, have uh, told me in comments, like, man, that doesn't look like a standard SKS. It looks a little different. So like I thought SKS that, and AK had a baby. I guess, man. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it just seems like for the amount of time that it would take to make a rifle like this, why not just make an AK? I don't know, man. The world may never know. All right, one more mag. I'm going to let Chad have a few shots. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking a few I'll shots. I'll tell you what, for fun and because I'm cruel and crazy, I'm going to try to shoot that gopher down there at 250. All right. Just aim a little bit on the uh, left side there. You're favoring a little bit right here at 100. All right, aim small, miss small. Or aim small, aim miss small. small, miss all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, now I'm realizing how bad of an idea this was. It takes up like about a tenth of the front side. It does. does. I'm just going to pop a few shots at him. Send it. 
All right, low and left, about six inches under in there. Getting closer, bring it up a little more. Woo, you're scaring him right past his belly on the right. Oh, same place, a little low and under his belly. That one was uh, just left. Bring it up a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna go into 300. Ah, the gopher? No. <laughs> How about the coyote? Uh, yeah, go for him. Right past his head on the right. All right, that one was like a foot low under his neck. Just past his nose. That one looked like it was right under his belly. Right over his back. <laughs> it's like, he's like, hey, you're not gonna get me today, so. I reckon, man. All right, couple of more rounds. Yeah, it's just throwing that last round. It's kind of strange. So it throws the last complete round of ammunition out of the mag. Out of the chamber, yeah. All right, yeah, out of the magazine. Weird. But, you know, the point is still there. We just want to show off this kind of odd, obscure gun. Uh, how many of those did they import? Any idea? I am not 100% on that, but I do know that I, I want to say that they produced uh, about 20,000 of these guns. Oh, totally. wow, that is not much at all. Yeah, I don't know how many were brought in, but uh, I know they didn't make a, a terribly large amount of them. They're just kind of weird and obscure. Okay, uh, let's try again. I'm gonna try to hit that gopher, or a uh, coyote. Okay. There you go. Just past his nose there. Under his belly. Yep. Oh, way over his back. Right over his head. All right, over to the 300 yard gong. Just uh, low, right under it. Uh, high. Oh, off well, no wonder it's hitting low. I forgot to bring the sights back up like an idiot. <laughs> now I really feel like a fool. That's okay. Well, it's supposed to be a battle sight uh, setting, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're about a foot over the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, I think, well, that one actually fed the last round, oddly enough. I'm going to let Chad have a go. Uh, definitely a neat gun, you know, it's just something we thought we'd take out. Uh, you know, we always enjoy our real serps around here. Uh, always a lot of fun. So uh, why don't you try it out? Sure. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few shots with the Albanian here. This is a very, very cool rifle. And uh, you've already got dialed up for three, right? Yeah, it should be. All right. I'm gonna shoot some of the same ammo, and then I've got a little bit of the Hornady SST, the steel case stuff with a, a ballistic tip projectile in there. Um, I might try a little bit of that, see if it might shoot a little bit better. Can't hurt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's an SKS. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, that front sight is like <laughs> Yeah, it is. All right, I'm just gonna They, they are kind of crudely made compared to the Chinese and Russian ones. Definitely are, all right. I'm going to just bullseye and see where I'm at. Go. You're on the gong. Oh, kind of okay. uh, favoring the bottom, but you're on it. All right. We'll see. That went about high and right, about a foot. That's the same thing that was happening to you, man. It Like one would hit kind of low around 7 o'clock, and then the other one would be way off at 1 o'clock. Yep. Weird, man. That uh, missed off the right edge of the gong. <laughs> Low right. All right. Off the right edge. Weird. Just over the top. Ah, I'm like keeping the same point of <laughs> I know, it's weird, man. <laughs> it's an SKS. It's still a cool gun. I mean, it's a neat gun. It is, for sure. Hi, uh, high center impact. Right over the top. Dadgum it, man. Right over the top. Bah! High center. Uh-oh. Huh, that time it didn't launch to the rear. It probably threw the last round out or something. It's weird. Maybe I didn't see it hit the table, but hell, who knows. All right, let me try a little bit of this SST just for the heck of it. Yeah. It seemed to be running pretty good out of the Rashid that we shot a little while back. Let's see. Oh, 
would be nice to have some stripper clips. Stripper Something clips. I neglected to bring. Stripper clips. Oh, it'd be nice to have some stripper clips. At the range today. You guys don't like, you know, roast me for my singing. My poor ability. All right. Horn yep. the 123 grain SST. Let's see. Basically a steel case, but with a premium bullet on it. Yep. All right. So 300. I'm going to keep the same point of aim and see what happens. Go. Low center impact. Okay. Impact. Yep. Much better. Just over the top. High left impact. Same spot. Just left of center. Just off the left edge of the gong. All right. High left, about a foot. <laughs> the barrel is uh, definitely cooking up some mirage on the front of the thing. That front sight is doing this. <laughs> it probably is already doing that to begin with. Maybe. High center impact. Well, yeah, ran those. It did. Shoot, I'm gonna shoot 10 more of those. Yeah, go ahead. Well, feed a little bit more consistent ammunition, I guess. This stuff does shoot pretty good. I mean, for what it is, it's uh, only bad thing is it's way more expensive than, you know, just off the shelf Tula or Wolf or Barnall or surplus ammunition for the most part. Oh man, so expensive. But Yeah, but for hunting, I mean, it's a good cheap hunting ground if you want a good premium hunting ground. Absolutely. And it comes in 50 round boxes too, which is pretty neat. But usually, I found them for about like 30 bucks or so, maybe a little bit less some places. But definitely not terrible. Should I sing the stripper clip song again? No? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, you, you could buy 100 VMAXs and load your own for about that. Yeah, we could take the steel case and just pull the bullet. That's what they did, basically. <laughs> yeah. More or less. All right, I'll shoot a few more rounds then. I'll hang it up. Whenever you're ready. That front sight being candid is killing me. I know, it is It is a little off, isn't it? All right, try to keep the same point of aim. Like there. I said, those Albanians are kind of crude compared to the other ones. Yep. High left impact. Low center impact. All right, yeah. Those shots that. are about almost a foot and a half apart. Not, I changed my point of aim. Okay. So. High center. Okay. About the center of the gong. Off the right edge, about six inches. Ah. High left. Off the right edge. High center. Same spot. Off the left edge, about three inches. Smooth shooting gun overall. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're not really known for their, uh, you know, blistering accuracy. No, I wouldn't say so, but definitely a neat uh, variant of the SKS. I mean, if you're an SKS guy, I mean, Definitely one to have. When Eric brought this thing back, I'm like, what is that weird thing? Like, I'd never seen an SKS from Albania before, that kind of AK-47 style charging handle in there and everything. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video on this uh, kind of unique variant of the SKS family of uh, rifles here. Want to give you a special uh, thank you and shout out to our uh, Patreon supporters and those of you who purchase man cans. Uh, you guys really keep us going here on the channel. We could not do what we do without you guys and your support. So thank you very much for that. And stay tuned. We have many more videos on the way, a ton more military surplus content. Um, we have uh, the M46 project that we're still working on. Hopefully be able to get a little bit of hunting done with that rifle here before too long, the Husqvarna. And uh, several more gunsmithing type videos, reloading videos. You name it, we do it here on the channel. And uh, we'll see you next time. Stay tuned. <laughs>